benzene or then the aromatic compounds as the people referred to them earlier. The aromatic compounds, we can see the word aromatic, no, it sounds aroma, it's, it's coming from uh, fragrances. And the people earlier referred to the compounds in that way because of the fragrances that is associated with things like benzaldehyde that's found in peaches, cherries, almond, uh, tolihin, the tolau, balsam, ne, coming from a tree and so on. Uh, so all of them, it had been fragrances and the people then to uh, called them the aromatic compounds. Now, after they started uh, um, identifying the, the compounds and see what we have in there, it was found that all of these compounds contain, they have this benzene structure that you see there, ne, the benzene structure everywhere. So instead then we started referring to the aromatic compounds as uh, benzene and today we do not really think anymore about fragrances when we talk about aromatic compounds we have a totally different definition for aromatic compounds now we are not really going to do a very in detail study of benzene for us it's just an introduction to the uh, benzene compounds so we look at the uh, basic way of naming the, the benzene compounds and then just a few, a little bit about its structure and then a few of the reactions that we can expect with benzene. Now where does benzene come from? Sources, it is usually produced when coal is heated to very high temperatures in the absence of air and you have a mixture of volatile products. It's like during the production of uh, petrol and stuff from from uh, coal and then in that fractional distillation of the coal tar we find these compounds like toluene and xylene and naphthalene and you can see all the different compounds here now you need not to know all of the examples here or even something like that as it's only uh, included here so that we can see we find the benzene very often in other structures now let us have a look how are we going to name the different benzene compounds first of all are you packed as you know they do not really prefer the naming of compounds by using common names by using non-systematic names but they, these non-systematic names found here where you have the methyl with benzene, instead of calling this one methyl benzene, we have a common name which is toluene. And the uh, uh, hydroxy benzene, we prefer then to refer to as phenol. Or a minor benzene, we have the word aniline. So these ones are non systematic names, but it's so widely used and so well known that it is the accepted names then by IUPAC and we are going to use them all the time when we name and when we are dealing with a different reaction so make sure that you know these few that you see here all of them they will be important so toluene, phenol, aniline, benzaldehyde you see the aldehyde group there benzoic acid, ne, the carboxylic acid group with the benzene, acetophenone, as you can see here you have your acetyl group, ne, you remember the acetyl group we had before, uh, where we have the, let's quickly have a look at that, where you have your acetic acid and we just remove the OH what we have there is now our acetyl group and that is what is happening here you have your benzene ring and attached to it you have that acetyl group and now that you can see is the functional group of a ketone so it makes sense when we look at it here and we see they call it acetophenone if you have that acetyl group on the 
benzene. And here you have even two substituents, uh, the zeline, and now depending on how they are bonded, this one will then be the orthozeline, but we can also have others. We'll have a look at that now. And uh, the creso compounds. So make sure that you know these common name ones. So it helps us a lot if we know them to approach the naming of the benzene compounds. So let us have a look at some examples and then we'll come back to what we have here in our notes. If we have any benzene, so for example, you have benzene and you have somewhere a Cl attached. It's only one substituent. What we do when we have one substituent and you have to name the, the compound, you just mention that substituent. You see, this is not one of those common name ones. So that's why it's important that you know the common name compound so that you can recognize it. This is not a phenol or a toluene or a, a benzoic acid or anything like that. So here we just say we have the chloro and we name it as chloro and then followed by the word benzene, one word. Still remember, the IOPAC names, we always write them as one word name. Take another one. If I have a benzene and I have attached to it a propyl group consisting of three carbons, and make sure here, how is it connected? How is it linked? You have it linked by the middle carbon there. So what we have here is the isopropyl group. So it's an isopropyl, that's our substituent. So if you name this one, you state that substituent followed by the word benzene. If we have, now it seems as if you always have to put it in that position. Of course, it doesn't matter where you have it. It can even be here. Let's say I have the NO2 group. Now, the NO2 group we know as our nitro group. So if you have to name that, you will say I have nitro benzene without ever writing any number there for these ones because if you have only one substituent for sure that one where you have it linked will be the number one so you do not say it you just write name of the substituent followed by the word benzene name of the substituent followed by the word benzene yes, so that is if you have one substituent now what if I have two substituents. In other words, I have a di-substituted benzene. Now, if I have two, we have another method of naming them. We say, if I have them linked like this, I have these two bonded in position one and in position two. So, I have a one, two, dichlorobenzene. Now, instead of naming it like this, we prefer with benzene to say now, I have them bonded in the ortho way. So what I have here is ortho dichlorobenzene. And we are not going to write that whole word every time. You're just going to say O and you have dichlorobenzene. So instead of doing that 1,2-dichlorobenzene with benzene, we are going to make use of ortho or if you have those chloro groups in position 1 and in position 3. 1 and 3. In other words, there's one carbon in between. Then we say, I have the meta position. They are bonded in the meta way here. Meta, when you have 1, 3. Orto, when you have 1, 2. And for meta, again, you need not to write the whole meta 
term there, you only make use of the M and you write dichlorobenzene. Now, careful. You cannot say it is meta 1,3 dichlorobenzene. This is a, an error that of, occur very often. You cannot do that. You just mention meta and you say dichlorobenzene. The meta is telling you about that one three. So you should never ever combine the two ways of naming. So it's not wrong to say one three. It's just that with a di substituted benzene, it is really preferred to make use of ortho or meta or then the other possibility if you have them in position 1 and in position 4. So if you have them in opposite positions, it can be like that, it can even be bonded CL there, the other one here. You see it's every time opposite positions, there, position 1 and position 4. Now when that happens, we say we have the para way of bonding there. So there you will then make use of the letter P. So if we have a dye substituted benzene, we are then going to make use of this ortho meta para way of referring to it. So let us do some examples and see if we can uh, understand what we should do here. Let's say you have that with a BR and you have to name. You see it's just two so immediately you set yourself with benzene we make use of ortho or meta or para. What do I have here? It is in the ortho way. So you can write that out so that you don't forget. That's what you are having there. Do we recognize any one of those common name compounds here? Yes, if I have the benzene with a hydroxo, I know we refer to that as phenol. So, to name this thing, you say ortho, because it's neighboring, state your substituent, bromo, ortho, bromo, and then followed by phenol. Let's have a look at another one. If I have my benzene, let us put CH3 there and we have NO2 here. Now, again you have only two, so you think in terms of ortho, meta, para. This is in position 1 and in position 3. So you have a 1, 3 now in between 1 there. So I have here the meta. Do I recognize any one of those common name compounds? Yes. If I have benzene with a CH3, we refer to that as toline. So let us name it. In the meta, because it's in the one position, in one carbon in between, and I have my other substituent, so it's meta. What is the substituent we have there? It is nitro, and our common name for this, toline, and we have our name. Another one. Uh, let me use a bromo there and another bromo. In what position? Only two. So again, automata para. Think about it. What is the one we have here? They are opposite to each other. They are in position one and in position four. So this is the para position that you have them here. Uh, do I recognize any of the common name compounds? 
No, it's not a phenol or a toluene or a benzoic acid or a benzaldehyde. I only have two bromo groups. So you will say, I have them in the para position. It is a bromo and another bromo, so it becomes dibromo. And followed by the word ben. Zin. So if you do not have any of those common name ones, you will always see the, the word benzene at the end. You don't find that if you have the common name one like toluene, like phenol. And then you are going to make use of the, 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 the common way to refer to them. Let us have a look at another example. I am going to give us one now. CL, CL. Have a look here. Do I have benzene here? No. What is the compound we have here as our parent? It is a cyclohexane. Now, when you have cyclohexane, we are not allowed to say this is ortho dichlorocyclohexane. That will be totally wrong. We cannot do that. So, ortho -meta para is not used when you have your other cyclic compounds. It is only used when I have the benzene. So, make sure that you do not ever use the ortho -meta para when you are having the cyclohexane or the cyclopentane or even the cyclohexene, you, you're not going to have to make use of it there. Let us have a look at another benzene compound. I am going to give us the phenol again and let us have two other substituents. So now we do not only have two. We have one, two, three substituents on our benzene. When it's three, we do not use the ortho -meta para. Now you are going to use numbers. Like we did before, you will try to have the smallest number on your substituents. If you recognize the common name compound like the phenol here, that common name one must be number one. So start with that. That is your number one. Now, according to our rules, second substituent must have the smallest possible number. So for sure you are going to come this way. So that one will be number two and then three and four and five and six. So if we write it here, we are going to say I have in position two and in position four. I have a antichloro, so it's dichloro and we have the common name compound there, phenol. And you have your name. Let's have a look at another example. If I have something like this, let's have a bromo and a bromo and a bromo. Right. Uh, you don't have any one of those those common name ones here, so we do not have one that immediately we can make number one. Then just follow your rules that you already know. So make sure you give the smallest possible number to your uh, substituents. There where you have two of them next to each other in neighboring positions, of course they will be number one and number two. Now what will be better? If I make that one number one, two, three, four, five, this one is number five. If I make it one, two, three, four, it is a smaller number. So it's better then to make that number one, that number two, three, four, five, six. And now we write the name and we say, I have in position one, two, and four. I have a bromo and a bromo and a bromo, so I have tri. Bromo, and you do not have a common name compound, so you will end here with benzene.
So you see every time, if we then uh, uh, briefly summarize what we said about the naming of the benzene compounds. Make sure you know the common names because we are going to have them very often. Then, if you have only one substituent, you name it according to that substituent. Let us use this one again. So you look at what you have there and you say, I have isopropyl and I have benzene. It's not one of the common name compounds, so you just write your substituent and you add benzene. That is if you have one. If you have two substituents, think of ortometa para. Let's say we have the aldehyde group there, so it's benz aldehyde, and we have another Cl. Now, let us name. What is our position here? There's one in between, so it's on position one and on position three. One three is what we prefer to refer to as meta. And you have your substituent, chloro. And then we have that common name compound there, benz aldehyde. But you see that meta because it's two. So if you have only one, the name of the substituent followed by benzene. Or if it's one of the common name ones, of course, you just say aniline. Tolihin, uh, phenol. Now, if I have here two, I think in terms of ortho, meta, and para. Ortho, if they are next to each other in the position one and two. Meta, if it's in position one and three. Para, if it's in position one and four. So that is then if you have two. And if you have three, we use the numbering. If you recognize one of the common name compounds, let's say you have aniline and you have a BRD and you have another BRD, you will say, now I have three, so to use the automata para because automata para is when you have two substituents only. If I have three, I use the numbers. And because I recognize my aniline group there, I will make that my number one. And then again, try to have the smallest possible numbers for the other substituents. So let us check. You have there number two, three, four, five, six. So what is the compound we have? On position two, on position four, you have a bromo and another bromo. So it's di bromo. And what is the common name compound again? NH2 on the benzene we refer to as aniline. Okay, I think that gives us a very good idea how you are going to name them. But now what happened? If we have a compound, say for example you have something like this, where you have an alkane with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons, and on that, attached to that, you have a benzene. Now, in the benzene, we have six carbons. In our alkane here, we have seven. The moment you have longer, just like we did with the cyclic al uh, alkanes, you will remember, the moment we have more carbons in our straight chain here, you will make that one a substituent. Now, usually when we have the substituents and the alkyl groups, we say if I have a methane, and it is present as a substituent, in other words, a hydrogen is out and it's now linked as a branch onto my compound, I refer to this as the methyl group. Or if I have ethane and a hydrogen is removed so that we have our alcohol,
Ko Gru, Its Itho, or Propo, etc. So this is well known to us. Now, when we come to the benzene, we also want to do the same thing. But you cannot do that. If you have benzene, now your benzene is usually a six carbon structure with six hydrogens. Now, if you have a closer look, you will see that. If we remove one so that you have C6H5 and you link it as a substituent, like in that case there, we have this tendency to refer to this as benzyl, thinking in terms of benzene with one H out benzyl, but it's not the correct way to go. Benzyl is when you have your benzene together with a CH2 group and then attached as a branch to something. Then you will say, what I have here is the benzyl. When we have benzene itself present as a substituent, we prefer to refer to them as phenyl groups. So something like this will now be a phenyl group. And if you have the phenyl group present, it can be indicated in this way. They can also make use of pH to indicate a phenyl group in a chain, or they can use the Greek letter phi, or phi, if you want to pronounce it like that. So you can have your benzene indicated in any of these ways. And if it's present then as a substituent, take note, we are going to refer to it as a phenyl group. So let us now name such an example. If we are let me take the heptane again, and we have our benzene attached to it. If I count them, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, doesn't matter what side we start counting, we have our benzene substituent there on number four. So what do we have? Four, and you refer to your substituent, phenol. And now you just name your chain. It is seven. I only have single bonds there. So what we have as the parent is heptane. So important for me and you to remember when we have our benzene present as a substituent on another parent chain, then you refer to it as phenol. Okay, now we have to have a look at some properties when we ha have the structure of benzene. Now, benzene, as we already said, it consists of six carbons and we have six hydrogens. There. If we have a closer look, we can look at the model again now, just have a look at your structure. It's six carbons. And then alternating positions, you have your double. Can you remember, what do we call an alkene if we have it alternating like this? You have a double and a single and a double and a single and a double and a single. We say we have conjugated alkenes. Now, this, you have a, a situation of conjugation here. You are absolutely right if you think in terms of that. Now, our four bonds on the carbons, let's have a look. You have one, two, three. The fourth will be the hydrogen. One, two, three, and the fourth will be the hydrogen. And that will now be the case with absolutely all of them. So that in the end, when we look at benzene, we have there C6H6. Have a look at your carbons. What hybridization do we expect for the carbon atoms in the benzene ring? Carbon is surrounded by one, two, 
three different electron groups. Every time we have three groups, we expect to have trigonal planar geometry. Hybridization going with that is sp2. So what you have here is a carbon that's sp2 hybridized where the sp2 hybrids are now arranged here in a trigonal planar way and that will be the case with each and every one of them. You can really go and have a look at every one of your carbons you will see it's the same situation. Bond angle that we have everywhere here 120 degrees every time. So all of them will now be sp2 hybridized. All of them will have a trigonal planar geometry and the bond angle of 120 degrees. So if we have a look at our model again, I think it makes sense to us what we have here. You have your six carbons and can you see here it is a planar structure that we have and each and every one of them will be sp2 hybridized. So we have still for every one of the carbons a p orbital that is not included in the hybridization and as we said before with the uh, trigonal planar arrangement you always have that p orbital here perpendicular. So on every one of the carbons here you have that p orbital perpendicular and then it is overlapping sideways to give us our pi bonds. But now you can imagine, like we had before with the conjugated alkenes, resonance is a possibility. Let's take our benzene now. And it's possible now for our pi electrons here to move over there. For the pi electrons to overlap there, for this pi bond to overlap there, so that we end here with another resonance hybrid. So that double bond is no longer there, but it's there. That double bond is no longer there, it is here. And that double bond move into that position. So you can see what you have there, if I can just quickly redraw it for us. We have that, and we have them shifted around. So you end here with two resonance hybrids. Which of them will be the actual benzene molecule? Not any one of the two. It will be something in between. So we have here a structure where all the carbon-carbon bonds eventually will be of the same length. Where all the bond angles will be similar. We have a planar structure. So you see all these things add now to the very stable structure that we have when we have benzene. And if we represent the, the two different resonance uh, sh uh, uh, hybrids that you see there, you will often see that people do this to represent the benzene. They draw a circle in the, in the structure. In this way they try to say to us, these pi electrons you see there, or there, it's actually moving all around. So you have them delocalized all over your structure. So very often you will find that people make use of this way to draw the benzene structure. We do not really prefer it. It's not wrong. You are always welcome to use it so you and you will it is a possibility that it can appear in a test paper or in a in, in an examination paper. But the reason why we do not really give preference to this way is because if you have it like that you can see very clearly I have a pi bond there so in there I have two pi electrons I have another pi bond so I have another two pi electrons and another so I have another two so in total what is the situation here two four six I have six pi electrons. If this is the way we indicate it, how do we know? In a circle, how many pi electrons? You do not know. So that is why we prefer then to make use of the, 
the, the lines instead of the circle, but nothing wrong, we can do that. So if you see something like that, always say to yourself, this is still the benzene that they are indicating to me there. Now, let us have a look, a further look at our structure then for benzene. Benzene, not a reactive alkene at all. Totally different. Actually, if I say alkene, I'm wrong. Because this is not an alkene. Alkenes undergo addition reactions very easy. So here, you do not have addition at all. It is because of this very stable structure here. Our electrons, these pi electrons, they are delocalized all over your structure. So you have actually here those electrons, you know, the lobe, of the pi molecular orbital. You have the one lobe and the other lobe and the pi electrons is all over our structure so that it is a very stable uh, ring that you eventually have there. That's why we find when benzene react, it's never ever going to be the addition reactions. Instead, to have the high uh, electron density here where we have the pi bonds, so we can expect them to react easily with electrophiles. And that is exactly what will happen when we look at the reactions of benzene. But instead of having addition, we have substitution reactions. So you are going to have one hydrogen out, and then in that position you can now have an OH to give you the phenol or an NH2 to give you the aniline or the CH3 to give you the toluene. So it's possible now that we can have it substituted by something to create our other benzene compounds. And when the reaction occur further, I have to just mention it. We are not going to do it now. It's not part of the work we have to discuss. We only do an introduction. But once you have something specifically here, say for example, you have the aniline group. We find that when they react further, there's a specific tendency that you can have certain groups will prefer to now react here in the ortho position to the aniline. Or if you have a bromo, uh, certain groups will prefer to react in the ortho, or others will prefer to react in the meta position. That is why? For us, it's important that we know what we mean when we refer to the ortho position, the meta position, the para position. So, because later on, when you study the organic chemistry further, you will deal with these terms again. And then it's important that we know what we have, what we are referring to. But I think enough said then about the structure of benzene. Take note, it's extra stable, it's a planar structure you have, all carbons sp2 hybridized, non-polar substance, actually should be a very good non-polar solvent, but benzene is not used. I just quickly want to, to state that we do not really use it as a, a, a solvent, we try to avoid it, because being exposed to benzene too often can cause cancer in the long term. So we try not really to, to make use of benzene itself. Yeah, we are often use the compounds that's containing benzene structures inside, but of course the other groups present can change the properties then totally. Now let us have a look at the different reactions that can occur when we have benzene. We have a very brief summary here of the reactions we need to take uh, note of. We are not going to look at the mechanisms that you will do now in the next semester's work. Uh, so let's have a look at the reactions taking place here. We have halogenation. Halogenation, you have a halogen added. Now it's not going to be like we are used to, the addition, we already mentioned that. You're not going to have addition reaction. Instead, you have a hydrogen out, and in the place of that hydrogen, now you have the Cl. But it will not occur just like that. 
we need to have a catalyst and the catalyst we use here is an iron catalyst iron 3 chloride which will act here as a Lewis acid yeah, that is accepting so you're, you're in your mechanism you will then find but now for us we are not really going there we just want to know that if I use my halogen in the presence of the iron catalyst I can prepare chlorobenzene or I can be prepare bromo if I make use of Br2 here bromine and I treat it in the presence of iron 3 bromide, I can have the bromobenzene prepared. So that is your halogenation reaction. We can also have nitration. Words indicate to you we are going to have the nitro group now, substituting one of the hydrogens so that you have nitrobenzene prepared in this way. What do we use as our reactants? nitric acid that makes sense to all of us because you need to have that NO2 group and that will come from this NO3 you have in the nitric acid together with the nitric acid we have to make use of sulfuric acid as our catalyst again and you have your nitrobenzene then sulfonation where we use fuming sulfuric acid fuming sulfuric acid is a mixture of sulfur trioxide together with sulfuric acid and you have the SO3H onto your benzene which we refer to as benzene sulfonic acid. Here we have two similar reactions we refer to them as Friedel Craft reactions so it's a name reaction like we often have in the organic chemistry <coughs> sorry if you have a look at your uh, uh, Friedel craft here you can see what we have is an alkyl group that we attach to our benzene on the alkyl there is a chloro and what happened we make use of aluminium trichloride as our catalyst here and your your aluminium trichloride act as a Lewis acid so it's accepting the chloro group and then the alkyl group that's remaining <coughs> is attached to the benzene so that you have your isopropyl benzene prepared there or you can have Friedel Craft acylation where we have the acyl group you see the acyl differ from the alkyl because of that <coughs> carbonyl group that C double bond O so here we make use of the acid chloride and when we attach that again you have your aluminium chloride so you can see every time we have Friedel Craft reactions the catalyst we use will be the aluminium chloride and the aluminium chloride will every time react as a Lewis acid uh, not really part of the work I expect you to know but that is basically what happened here but if you think of it it makes sense to see what is left then is added onto your structure if you remove the Cl what is remaining here that is now added onto your benzene and you have your um, different types of benzene compounds formed there then the preparation of aniline here to prepare aniline we have to start first with the nitrobenzene so it's actually that reaction there where we have benzene and you treat it with nitric acid and sulfuric acid to have your nitrobenzene it's that one that you take further now and to have aniline we want to substitute the oxygens there by hydrogen so we want to reduce because you know inorganic if I remove oxygen or I add hydrogen I am busy reducing and that's exactly what's happening here you have reduction and the reducing agents that we can use iron in the presence of acidic solution need not just to be iron it can also be tin now tin you know SN or tin chloride SNCl2 
you will see later on this one has got a specific way of reacting so we are going to use it for specific situations but at this stage you can just say it can be any one of them it can be the iron it can be the tin it can be the tin chloride as reducing agent and then in the next step treat it with a basic solution ne? sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide you need to have the base and you have your aniline and the very last one very important reaction we have here is our ethyl uh, oh, it can be any uh, alkyl benzene the one they use here is ethyl benzene it could have been this isopropyl benzene it doesn't matter any alkyl benzene if we treat it with potassium permanganate in acid it is uh, you know if we think what we did before with the alkenes every time we treat it with potassium permanganate in acid we expect to have cleavage now with the benzene you are just going to have oxidation of that carbon that is linked onto the benzene so you have it changed to COOH and you have benzoic acid no matter what alkyl group you have it could have been toluene it can be ethyl benzene it can be propyl benzene in the end when you treat it with potassium permanganate in acid you every time end here with benzoic acid now that's basically the reactions that me and you need to be able to do let's have a look that is then our introduction to benzene now to make sure that we are fine let's have a look at some questions some exercises you have you are given some compounds here and you need to give the IUPAC names take that first one I have benzene and there's two substituents here it's not one of the common name compounds I do not see phenol or aniline or anything like that it's just two different substituents if it's two of them I think in terms of ortho meta what do I have here they are next to each other so it's in the ortho position so what I have here is bromo and chloro make use of your alphabetical order so we can name this one then let us find ourselves a paper here we can say we have them ortho which one is first bromo because b is before c in the alphabetical order then we have chloro followed by the word benzene that will be then the preferred name for that one if we take the next one you have here the following substituent it has got five carbons so it is a pentyl group in that sense if you recognize your CH with a CH3 CH3 you will say what we have here is an isopentyl group but that is now the more common way and we we use the common way if I have an isopropyl or if I have an isobutyl or a sec butyl or a third butyl the moment the branches become longer we do not really prefer this way although it will not be wrong to name this one then isopentyl benzene but what we actually will prefer here is if you have something that is containing more carbons than four we name them as we would have named an alkane so make sure you find your longest chain four of them there and that one is now our branch you need you uh, to number them you cannot now decide okay I want to start there or I want to start here there where it is attached to the parent it must be number one you we don't have a choice so that will be number one number two number three number four so what is the name for this substituent of ours 
on number three, we have that CH3, so we have a methyl. The chain itself is four, so it would have been a butane, but because it's now present as a substituent, it becomes butyl. You want to tell the people this three is just referring to our butyl group. So we prefer then to put it in brackets so that we know this three methyl butyl, this is our substituent. So the three is not referring to number three on the benzene. It is number three on the butyl group. And then you have your parent, which is benzene. And still, it's one word. Yeah, you write it as one word. All right, let's try another one. We have here NH2, NO2. Do we recognize any of our common name compounds? Yes. NH2 with benzene, we refer to as aniline. You see, if you do not know those common name things that you have in the notes, you are going to have trouble to name them. So make sure you recognize that aniline. Now, how many substituents do we have? One there, one there. It's to think in terms of ortho, meta, para. What is our position here? In position one, in position four, in two opposite positions. So that will be para here. What is the name of our substituent we have there together with the aniline? NO2 is what we refer to as nitro. And then our parent chain there is aniline. So the way we would name that one, para nitro aniline. Let's have a look at the next one. I have benzene. I have a chloro group, a methyl group, a chloro group. It's three substituents. So we are not going to make use of orthometapara. We are going to use numbers. Do I recognize one of the common name compounds? Yes, I have benzene with a methyl and methyl benzene we know as toluene. Now, that one that is the common name will be number one. What does our rule state? Have the smallest possible number for the following substituents. So next to it will then be number two and then we have no choice. This is the way we should go. So what do we have here? On position number two, on position number five, chloro, chloro, di, chloro. Parent is toluene. Toluene. And there we have our name. Let's have a look at the next one. You have benzene. There's an isopropyl group, a nitro group, a nitro group. I do not see any of our common name compounds. Now we just stick to our rules. Try to have the smallest possible numbers for the different substituents. If I start with my number one, you see these two are neighboring, so we will make them number one and number two. If I make that one number one, this is two, three, four. If I make this one number one, two, three, four, five. What is better? This way around. So start there with your number one, number two, three, number four, five, and six. So here, before you make use of any alphabetical order to number, it is better to number it so that your substituents have the smallest possible numbers. Now, if I write it, Always remember your substituents need to be written in alphabetical order. Isopropyl nitro, which is first 
according to alphabetical order. The ISO. So on number one, we have isopropyl. On number two, and on number four, you have a nitro and another nitro, di-nitro, benzene. And there we have our name. And don't let the D for di there confuse you. And you start to say, but that D is before the I in the alphabetical order. Remember, those di and tri and tetra, those things that do not have any influence on our alphabetical order. It's just the name of the substituent itself that's going to play an important role. Another one. You are given a benzene. And onto that, you have an alkane. How many carbons in the alkane? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's more carbons in the alkane chain than we have in the benzene. So now our benzene becomes a substituent. What do we call it when it's substituent? It is a phenyl group. Now, how do you number? One, two, three will be the best way to go. So our phenol is on number three here. So three phenol. And our parent chain we have there is a hept for the seven carbons. And it's all single bonds, heptane. And there you have your name again. So practice them because the more we practice, the better we can do them. An interesting one that is uh, included here in your notes, have a look at this example. Where we have the benzene with the CH3 that we know is one of our common name compounds there, the toluene, and you have NO2, NO2, NO2. You cannot use the automata para because you have many substituents here. That one will be number one. Now you can go here, number two, or you can go there, number two. Will it make any difference? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No. So it doesn't matter what way you go. So if you name this one, you will say in position number two, in position number four, in position number six. Nitro, nitro, nitro. So I have two, four, six, tri, nitro, and my common name compound, toluene. And look at this one, tri, nitro, toluene. Tri, nitro, toluene. What is our word for that? TNT. Dynamite. Just something interesting. So that is one of our benzene compounds then that we know people use when they cause explosions. Okay, let's have a look at our reactions again and see if we can write our different reactions for the benzene compounds, the ones that you need to be able to give us. If I have benzene, I can have halogenation. How? Treat it with Cl2 in the presence of iron 3 chloride. What happened? I have my hydrogen substituted and I have a Cl in its place. So I am preparing chlorobenzene. In the same way, I can use bromine, making use of iron 3 bromide as my catalyst. Again, it will now substitute one of the hydrogens. Doesn't matter which one you choose to substitute, they are all similar, and you have your bromobenzene. Or 
we can take nitric acid, sulfuric acid. If those react together with the benzene, what is substituted? Our NO2 group. So from the nitric acid, we have the NO2, so we have nitrobenzene, which in turn, we know we can reduce. And by reducing it, we are preparing aniline. So reducing agents that we can use, iron in acid medium, treating it afterwards with some alkali. And what happened? Oxygen is lost in its place. You have hydrogen. So reduction because oxygen is out and hydrogen is added. Reduction and you have your aniline. Then we can treat our benzene with a fuming sulfuric acid. Fuming sulfuric acid, mixture of sulfur trioxide and sulfuric acid. Also sometimes written as H2S2O347. You know it as oleum, pyrosulfuric acid. It is actually the same as fuming sulfuric acid. Now when we do that, we have the SO3 group here with the H and we say we are preparing benzene sulfonic acid. The other two reactions we still have to pay attention to, two very important ones, is the Friedel-Craft reactions. And we have Friedel-Craft alkylation where we use an alkyl group with a Cl in the presence of aluminium trichloride as our catalyst. What happened? Cl, go to the AlCl3, you are going to have the aluminium 4 uh, chloride ion formed, and that CH3CH2 you have there is what we have on our benzene. So let's just put it here, CH2, CH3, and you have your ethyl benzene prepared. Or if you use the, the propyl uh, group, you would have had propyl benzene or whatsoever. But this is an alkyl group you are adding. So this is Friedel Craft Alkylation. There is no carbonyl group. There is no C double bond oxygen. You only have the alcohol group. If I make use of my acid chloride, you see your acid group and in the acid the OH is replaced by a Cl, so you have your acid chloride and that is now reacting with the aluminium trichloride catalyst. That again it's going with a LCL3 and what you see there link onto your benzene group so that you have C double bond O CH3 there. And when you have that, we refer to it as Friedel-Craft acylation. So if it's only the alkyl group, Friedel-Craft alkylation. If it's the C double bond O, Friedel-Craft acylation. One last one we have to remember, if I take this and I treat it with potassium permanganate in acid solution, we know this is very, very strong oxidizing conditions. What happened? The carbon attached to our benzene become strongly oxidized. Strongly oxidized, giving you benzoic acid. So you see, in this way, you can really practice. So I would suggest that you draw yourself, you know, the benzene and see. If you can remember, it doesn't matter in what order you write them, but do you remember your reactions? Can you write them? And then you know you are prepared for benzene. This is the only part that we will do for benzene.